Having that one Pokemon you stop prankster move storyline, but the, the Tailwind team actually has a lot of tools against Trick Room, and actually we're not going to see a Trick Room lead. It's Incineroar and Urshifu. Yeah, a very safe lead from both these trainers. You have the Incineroar and the Urshifu out on the field for Leonard versus the Terrapagos and the Amoongus on the field for Andrew. So that Amoongus coming out in a supportive position with the Terrapagos to redirect attacks and to help protect its partner. Absolutely. Now Leonard is pressuring Terrapagos to not go for a defensive option here, or to not go for the terrestrialization. He says, hey, if you terrestrialize close combat, it'll do super effective damage, you will lose that Terra Shell. Um, and also I can pressure that Terra Shell with Fake Out. So, on the one hand, like, you've got a lot of pressure on the Trapagos, but you don't have that much pressure on the Amoongus. Here's the fake out. It is just into the Amoongus here, so it's going to take a little bit of damage, but it's also going to do a little bit back with the Rocky Helmet as Urshifu. Let's see what it wants to go for here. It's just going to be the U-turn, actually. I like this a lot. You're doing uh, not too much damage to Trapagos, but you're breaking that Terra Shell, and that's going to be very important for Leonard later on. You're also pivoting out the Urshifu prior to it taking any damage this turn, and as Leonard's Urshifu is running Choice Scarf, you have to imagine that it may not be as invested in bulk compared to some other Pokemon. Raging Bolt, though, from Leonard's side of the field, does have plenty of bulk with Assault Vest and uh, could have <gasps> taken this Terra Star Storm a little bit more comfortably. Oh Unfortunately, goodness. though, Andrew making the correct call there, targeting down that Incineroar and just getting a one-hit knockout onto it after the Rocky Helmet recoil. Yeah, I'm shocked to see that. I think, you know, we saw earlier how valuable it was that Leonard was running an Incineroar that was super fast. And here we see the exact opposite uh, the drawback. Like, you only have so many stat points to use in your Pokemon to train them. And by, by putting them into speed, you're losing them in bulk. I'm shocked that that wasn't even a critical hit. Raging Bolt and, you know, uh, uh, Calorotice, they are good Pokemon here. But the thing is, like, you've lost a Pokemon, and now there's nothing really stopping just the damage from Terrapagos. So Leonard definitely feels like he's on the back foot here. Yeah, I think Andrew also very smartly not terrestrializing that Terrapagos turn number one. If you did get flinched by the fake out, you would still have a lot of health and a lot of bulk, and you could then also save your terrestrialization for later if things went horribly wrong. Yeah. But now that the Urshifu is off the field, now that you have this opportunity to go for the terrestrialization, you have to take it so that you can do big damage with the Terra Star Storm. Because at the end of the day, if the Amoongus gets to attack at all this turn, it's not going to be able to match the damage. Absolutely. Here's Terra Star Storm. As you can do a fair bit to both Pokemon with the choice specs, but it is slightly weaker than when it was not terrestrialized. You see it actually doing not a, a, a ridiculous amount of damage. Here's Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt coming out here, doing actually a meaningful jump to Terrapagos, and Glacial Lance coming out here. Is this going to pick up the Amoongus? It depends on how it's trained, but that chip damage might be pretty impactful. It is. Amoongus goes down, and all of a sudden, I feel like Leonard's kind of back into this. He did take some damage on both his Pokemon, but they're both so tanky. Uh, Calorus getting a, an attack boost here, and Raging Bolt is now threatening a Thunderclap here, which could be a really big deal. The Terrapagos at such low health using the choice specs as well means that if Leonard decides to go for that Thunderclap, the only way that Andrew can protect that Pokemon would be switching it out. But is that some, is that a risk you want to take? The question here is how much is Calyrex Ice going to take from Urshifu? Because if Calyrex Ice can get Trick Room up here, we know that it's running close combat and it has an attack boost. And so with Chiyu, with, with Terrapagos, with Urshifu, these Pokemon all take so much damage from um, from uh, Calyrex. And you know what? I, I bet like maybe close combat Nakua Jet might pick up the KO, right? And maybe Surging Strikes with Aqua Jet, it might get the KO on Calyrex, but there is no Aqua Jet. Andrew has opted to run Sword Stance, which is an incredible move and is really, really strong, but runs a huge risk here if Trick Room goes up. So what will Andrew go for here? A huge risk is being taken as Terrapico switches out of the field and Chi Yu takes its place. While the Beads of Ruin ability will help strengthen Terrapagos' attacks later on oh, in the endgame, it's going it. to have to stick around. But Leonard goes for the Thunderclap into that Urshifu, gets a one-hit knockout. Oh. And this Calyrex Ice Rider foregoes the Trick Room. This is a Glacial Lance oh with the attack who single target is not enough to pick the KO uh, Chi Yu, but it's Choice Scarf. The Terrapagos' is Choice Specs. Raging Bolt has a great decision to make here as to who you thunderclap first. Leonard Kraft won this game in that single turn. He identified that the obvious play was to go for the thunderclap into the Terrapagos because, it, as you mentioned, Gabby, it's holding a choice item. And we are seeing the choice item's downside here, which is that you cannot switch moves, meaning you cannot use a defensive option like protect. So thunderclap into the Terrapagos would have been a very safe move. It could not protect. But Leonard identifies, hey, I just saw that Terra Star Storm didn't even, like, it doesn't do half of my health. So I can actually make a prediction that's somewhat safe because if Urshi 
two Kugos for Protect. Well, it's still, like, it's like, you're not really taking that much damage. You'll still survive the Terra Star Storm, and Kyler's will get a second attack boost. And if you go for the obvious play of switching out the Terrafagos and attacking with Urshifu, then I will win the game on the spot. So Leonard showing that the threat of Trick Room actually applied so much pressure and actually used Raging Bolt offensively with Calyrex to just close out that game. But that just takes so much guts, Gabby, because it felt like Leonard was in control. It felt like he had a safe Thunderclap into Terrafagos and Trick Room. And something that sets again good players apart from great players and something that could catapult leonard into the finals of this tournament is his willingness to respect his opponent to say i know that you know that i have this option i know that you are good i know that you will respect me and therefore i'm going to act as if you are good as if you are a great player andrew says you know what i am a great player thank you very much and leonard says no actually thank you <laughs> I, I'm glad to hear they're polite about it yes, at the end of the day. Two very polite trainers, from what I can tell. <laughs> Again, I am wired directly into their brains. So, of course, yeah, of course. I mean, that, I that explains so much. Yes. And I'm sure we'll talk about that later. Uh, we don't have to. <laughs> anyway, we're jumping into game two here. These players, look at how dialed in they are. That, I mean, that's how you have to play. That's how you have yeah. to be. There is so much on the line. These are these players' dreams, right? It's a Pokemon battle, yes. But it's a Pokemon battle that these players care so much about. And the title, the opportunity to win the title of regional champion means so much. But they're showing a Pokemon. Pokemon adjustment already here. Swing out of the gates with Ferrigarath and Incineroar, a Pokemon that we did not see in the first game. Ferrigarath as Andrew switches up his leads as well. Unfortunately, though, for Leonard, Ferrigarath is not going to appreciate the presence of that Chi Yu on the opposing side of the field. Beads of Ruin is in play. Terrapagos will be the fastest Pokemon on the field behind that Chi Yu with Choice Scarf. And once this one turn of Fake Out is gone from Leonard's side of the field, I feel like we're going to start seeing some big damage fly. We, we can, but the interesting thing here is that the Chiyu is Terra Ghost. And so if you want to go for the Terra Ghost, you forfeit your ability to turn Terrapagos into the Pokemon that is the most scary uh, version of it with that with a Terra Star Storm that's a stellar type move that hits both opponents. So actually, uh, Terrapagos doesn't want to lose the Terra Shell, switching into Amoongus. And Andrew's saying, I don't think you're going to fake out my Chiyu. He's correct. Fake out goes out into the Amoongus, the threat of Terra Ghost keeping Chiyu safe as Dark Pulse comes out. Is it enough to pick up the KO on Ferrigarath? It's not! Leonard survives! Will it flinch? It does! Oh, that Ferrigarath had the opportunity to go for an attack there that turn, but thanks to the secondary effect of that flinch from the Dark Pulse, it was unable to move. Now you have this Amoongus on the field, which really appreciates the fact that Ferrigarath is at such low health, as when we were talking about this in Team Preview, Leonard's anti-Amoongus Pokemon really is that Ferrigarath. That's right. That was a huge, huge turn. I mean, without the flinch, I think this game could look very, very differently. And yeah, I mean, a good call from Leonard to know that he would survive a Dark Pulse, but yeah, it's, it's not going to take a second when I'll tell you that, but Ferrigarath going down there, that 30% chance of flinch coming up huge. And now what is Incinera going to do? Because if, if Leonard does not have Amoongus in the back, something is going to be falling asleep. Here's the Flare Blitz coming out into the Amoongus, not picking up the KO. That's a very that's a, a bulky Amoongus, and it's actually going to do a lot of damage if returned with both the Rocky Helmet and the Flare Blitz Recoil. Incinera hasn't been attacked yet except by Amoongus' Rocky Helmet, and look at how much health it's already lost. Over 60% forced to eat the Citrus Berry, probably far earlier than it would like to. Yeah, and with no safety goggles available to it either, as Ferrigarath was holding that item, that Incinera is put to sleep. Yeah, to, this is looking bad for Leonard. It, to Leonard's benefit, he does have the opportunity for a Pokemon to come out onto the field now, yeah. and you are going to outspeed the Amoongus at least. But That's true. with the Chiyu locked into Dark Pulse and looking at Leonard's Pokemon, I mean, you have to assume we're going to see either the Calyrex Ice Rider or the Urshifu from him. Yeah, I think it could also be, yeah, Raging Bolt is the other option. Like, Urshifu is obviously extremely, extremely good, but Raging Bolt felt like it did so much work that last game that I do understand the desire to bring it here. I mean, it makes sense, right? The, the problem really isn't the Pokemon on the field. It's the Pokemon in the back, right? Like, it's this Terrapagos mostly, because if it weren't for the Terrapagos, you could have brought in Calyrex Ice Rider, maybe Terra had gone for the Trick Room or just gone for a KO on the Chiyu and then figured it out from there. Terrapagos switching in here, getting the Regenerator ability on Amoongus, saying, hey, I know that you don't have great ways to hit it. Here's another Dark Pulse. It is being boosted by the Beads of Ruin. Um, it's the first turn of sleep in Incineroar was guaranteed to take that. The question is, is Raging Bolt going to be able to attack here? It is Thunderbolt. It is going to be weakened by the Terra Shell here. So Terrapagos losing the value out of that Terra Shell. A Paralysis could turn this around. It, it is, oh my god, that actually did a lot of damage thanks to the Beads of Ruin. So yeah, yeah the Terra type on this uh, Raging Bolt is electric, actually. I almost wonder, Gabby, do you think there's a chance that with the Terra electric and the and the now not, not super, like the, the neutral damage and 
the Beads of Ruin, is there a chance that that Terra Electric Thunderclap could knock out Terrapagos? I mean, if anybody would know that, it would be Leonard Craft III, That's who is right. arguably the most knowledgeable po Pokemon trainer out there in terms of mechanics. And I, I think beyond that, honestly, this is a shot that you oh, have to take. Oh, he's going for Your it. Your Incineroar is asleep. You probably aren't going to wake up this turn, but you know that if you attack with the uh, Thunderclap, and if you go for this Terrastalization, you're guaranteed to hit one of these Pokemon, as again, they're both holding those choice items. Yeah, the, if, if this works, Thunderclap comes out, will it KO? Terrapagos has got so much tankier, but it is a very powerful move. Not, well, not, not very close, unfortunately. Dark Pulse coming out here as well. This, it is worth noting, this game is not definitely over. Like, there is still a way for Leonard to get back into it. This is going to KO the Raging Bolt, and will do a lot of damage to the Incineroar. I mean, it might KO. I'm not entirely sure. Okay, yeah, uh, I think this game is over, Gabby. We're going to game three. I do think that was the right play from Leonard, though, identifying that, hey, you know what? I'm so far behind that flinch just put me so, so far behind. The only way back into this is I need Thunderclap to KO Terrapagos, and to his credit, he would have got it with a critical hit. If he'd gotten a critical hit, yep. woken up with Incineroar, gotten a parting shot off, this entire game could be different. And so we do see his final Pokemon here is the Calyrex Ice Rider. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, against the four Pokemon left, there's just nothing Leonard can do. And this is one of the weaknesses of Furigarath, is that it's very vulnerable on that setup turn. And uh, uh, one of the strengths of Terrapagos is that Leonard did not want to terrestrialize his Furigarath turn one to take less damage from the Dark Pulse because of the threat of Terrapagos. So it's a 4-0 victory for Andrew Zhang here in the second game over best of three, meaning that whoever wins this final game of the set will be advancing towards the finals. Yeah, I really do like how Leonard tried to lead the Farigarap in this game number two to just respect the fact that, yes, Andrew did lead Amoongus both games and uh, really just say, hey, I want to make sure that this Amoongus is essentially neutralized before I try to go for my speed control, before yeah. I try and go on the offense. But unfortunately for Leonard, there just wasn't enough time and Farigarap took too much damage from that Dark Pulse. Yeah, I think the turn one was really important there, right? Yeah. Where uh, Fake Out, that had gone into Chiyu, and I think on a Terrapagos team, you can risk it going into Chiyu there because because of the Terragos being so costly, Terrapagos' stats improve in a meaningful fashion when it terrestrializes, and both its HP and special attack stat become significantly higher, as well as uh, Terra Star Storm becoming a spread move. And so, um, yeah, it, it can be a pretty big deal to get that, that uh, Terra Star Storm and the terrestrialization off. And so, because of that, ter Terrapagos players rarely want to terrestrialize another Pokemon. It does happen occasionally, and of course, Leonard might have felt like he needed to respect the option, but you can typically be a little bit more aggressive with the like assuming that the other Pokemon are not going to Terra because the cost is so high of terrestrializing a Pokemon that is not Terrapagos. So then that begs the question though, if you go for the run back with the Incineroar against the Chiyu lead, do you go for the fake out into that spot or do you think that Andrew Zhang's just gonna take a huge swing? and go for that terrestrialization. It's tough. In a game two, when you're up a game, it's, it yeah. feels like that's the time to risk it, right? Exactly. Say, you know, this is already a niche move, but in a game three, I mean, how many games this, this weekend have we seen by a player making an incredibly aggressive play, kind of betting, going all in on a Pokemon, on like a specific play, calling a specific option. And so now that it's game three, especially because you revealed what happened the last game, I would be a lot more nervous to, to go for it here. And we, we see that Leonard probably agrees as he does lead off with Incineroar and Raging Bolt against Urshifu and Amoongus. So once again, we do see the Amoongus on the field for Andrew, but it's going to be the Urshifu next to it. A Raging Bolt is a great adjustment here as well because it will be able to at least threaten the Urshifu pretty well. We saw how well it could take the attacks from Terrapagos and Chi Yu, but unfortunately, I think this Incineroar is in a bit of a tough spot here. You want to try and flinch the Amoongus so you don't get put to sleep, but then you're going to be taking a Surging Strikes from that Urshifu. Yeah, absolutely. It's a very dangerous position for both players because right now you're being threatened by Fake Out and Thunderbolt. There was the option for Swords Dance, protect both, go for a Swords Dance, but not what uh, Andrew's going for here. Surging Strikes comes out. It does a lot of damage. The thing is, this Incineroar is holding the Citrus Berry, and if I know Leonard, I might, like, it might have been trained to survive <laughs> the Surging Strikes after the Citrus Berry, but the Rocky Helmet might make things a little bit more complicated. Second of Surging Strikes, I don't think it's going to be enough. I think the Rocky Helmet is actually going to put Incineroar. It's going to make the difference here. Incineroar goes down after a single Surging Strikes, but what did Raging Bolt go for? Will it KO the Urshifu in a single hit? Because if it does, this could change the game immensely. The move coming out is, is... Volt switch, I don't think it's gonna be enough damage. <laughs> no, and oh, oh my goodness, it is. it is. Is it a critical hit? It's not. No. Raging Bolt has a ton of special attack investment, or maybe it just, 
Yeah, like somehow picks up the KO and Raging Bolt is switching out here. But Gabby, I don't think that's that bad of a trade for Leonard. I don't think so either because now Leonard has the opportunity to get that Furigraph out on the field in a situation where the Incineroar could then maybe come. Oh, the Incineroar was just knocked out. But yeah. still, you can have that support alongside of that Pokemon so you're not in as bad of a position as it was in game number one. You do have to respect the threat of this Amoongus here, but we know Calyrex Ice Rider will outspeed and could potentially knock out from this range. That's right, yeah. So, I mean, Ice Rider, we saw from after in game one, fake out plus Glacial Lance was enough. Most times that should be enough, unless the Amoongus has a ridiculous amount of, of defensive training. As Raging Bolt comes back in here, I love this positioning from Leonard. What this is saying is, hey, you can Rage Powder, yes, but that means that I'm gonna get your Amoongus, and if you don't Rage Powder, then Thunderbolt will, will break the Terra Shell. Um, <gasps> Oh, oh my goodness, we are seeing something extremely unexpected as I'm Terrapagos. Excited. Yeah, this is pretty ridiculous. This, so Hyper Beam is different than Terra Star Storm. Uh, Terra Star Storm actually becomes weaker when Terrapagos terrestrializes because of the fact that the move turns into a stellar type, so it's not getting the same type of attack bonus from Terrapagos being a normal type. Hyper Beam, on the other hand, keeps not only the same type of attack bonus by being a normal type move, it also gets a stellar boost on top of that. So here's the stellar Terra from Andrew. We saw how quickly Andrew locked in. Seems very confident that it will pick up the KO here if, if Andrew decides to go for it. Here's Terra Stellar from Terrapagos. This turn could decide the game, Gabby. This turn could decide the game. A big risk, though, as you Next. are not able to attack next turn with Terrapagos. Hyper Beam, though, into the Ice it's a Rider. One -hit KO. That's a one-hit knockout. That Terrapagos was able to make that work. Can take the Thunderbolt Ooh. as well here. And with the Raging Bolt put to sleep by Spore, Andrew might have just found a way to break through Leonard's strategy. It all depends on the last Pokemon. If it's Frigoraph, Leonard does have a way to wake up and he has a way to attack around the, uh, the, the safety goggles. But if it's Urshifu, I don't know if it's gonna be possible for Leonard to get around this Amoongus. Leonard taking his time, he's thinking things through. We also haven't seen the Amoongus on Leonard's end. I don't know how good that would be here, but it is the other option. But it really comes down to this last Pokemon. We saw Urshifu in game one. We saw Ferrigarath in game two. What is it gonna be from Leonard? Taking a moment, I think, just to process the Gravitas Urshifu. here. I mean, if you think about what's on the line, the winner of this match will go on to the finals. The winner of this match will get championship points, will get prize money. There is so much on the line so here much. for these trainers, and that's exactly why you saw Andrew reach for that Hyper Beam. Yeah, That absolutely. was the out, and that could have been the winning play. Here comes a Rage Powder just to keep the Terrapagos safe this turn from any damage. Close combat, not very effective, going to drop the defense of that Urshifu in addition to taking some recoil damage from Rocky Helmet. Raging Bolt does not have the opportunity to wake up this turn either, but really, as long as Amoongus is around to use Rage Powder, that Terrapagos could go for another Hyper Beam. Yeah, the thing is that Hyper Beam is only, I believe, 90% accurate, which means that if it misses a single time, this entire game could turn, could turn around. Um, Chiyud only has the move Heatwave to hit multiple targets, so if somehow Leonard were to deal with these two Pokemon, Chiyu could find itself in a lot of trouble. We do see, actually, a really risky play here from Andrew choosing to save Terrapagos. Leonard has a way back into this game. There is a one in three chance that Raging Bolt will wake up. And if Leonard targeted down the Chi with a close combat and and uh, Raging Bolt wakes up and goes for a Draco Meteor, this game could be turned completely on its head. Eads of Ruin will take a moment to activate here to ensure that special attacks do more. Here comes that close combat. It's a one hit knockout oh, onto Raging the Chi what will Raging Bolt do? It's a one in three chance, Gabby. It's a Raging Bolt, this is your moment. If you want to win this tournament, you need to wake up right now. It stays it's asleep. Unfortunate for Leonard as uh, Andrew fires off with a spore here, going to put Urshifu to sleep, and it's still not over, actually. Um, Leonard still having this full HP Raging Bolt means that he does have a way back into this game. It's going to be so hard against these powerful Pokemon Amoongus and uh, uh, Terrapagos, but it's not over just yet. It's not over just yet, and Terrapagos does get the opportunity here to change the attack that it's using, so it will not be relying on a Hyper Beam anymore. It looks like Andrew is switching to Terra Star Storm, which should be yeah, a, a knockout option. onto that Urshifu. Definitely. 
but will take a couple more turns for this Raging Bolt. But as long as Amoongus is there to protect its partner in that Terrapicos, it is going to be able to go for these attacks. How much is it going to do, Gabby? Terra Star Storm coming out here. It will KO Urshifu. The question is, how much does it do to Raging Bolt with the Assault Fest? That's not that much damage. Raging Bolt, if you wake up this turn, if you connect to Draco Meteor, you can win this game. Raging Bolt stays asleep. We're just going to keep asking Raging Bolt to uh, wake up here on the field and go for that Draco Meteor. But even if it does land the Draco Meteor against the Amoongus, it's probably, it's probably will over. it be able to follow up with a knockout onto that Terrapagos? The odds are just getting slimmer and slimmer in this match. Yeah, Leonard's only chance is that he can tank two Terra Star Storms that are now stronger by being single target. And I think that that's not going to be enough here. There is still one way forward. Draco Meteor comes out. If it KOs the Amoongus, there is one final out. It gets a critical hit. All right. Not sure if that mattered. Gabby, let me tell you, the okay. only way that I see that okay. Leonard can, survive, can, can win this game is he has saved his Terra to the very end. If he goes for it here, he can go for Terra Electric, Thunderclap, and it will not KO unless he gets a critical hit. Critical hit, Terra Electric, Thunderclap. Roughly a 1 in 24 chance. That is Leonard's only way back into this game. Raging Bolt terrestrializes. Leonard identifies that it's his only way to win. He knows Raging Bolt won't make it through this turn. Thunderclap comes out 23 out of 24 times. Raging Bolt will be losing and Andrew will be winning, but what will it be here? Well, that was not the critical hit, unfortunately for Leonard. It was a perfectly calculated turn, but just did not turn out right. Raging Bolt will be KO'd by the Terra Star Storm, and Andrew Zhang is going to be moving.